Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. It is another drizzly, wintry day here, and um, it's really hard to get out into the greenhouse. But today I wanted to take you along as I plant up some ranunculus and just show you kind of how I do it here on the farm. I also, in this video, I was going to show you our flip of the greenhouse. So we are taking the greenhouse and reworking it, getting all of our spring crops in from sweet peas to our anemones and some snapdragons. Those are usually what I start with first. And Jason and Emily got the trellising in, which is really, really cool um, with my bum leg or my foot that's broken. It's not my leg, it's my foot. Um, it was a little bit tricky for me to do any of that. So we had Emily come help us and that worked out really well. I also got some of the last of our tulips in and I made a really cool raised bed. So I thought I would show you that as well because this is like a temporary raised bed. So some of you guys might find this pretty exciting um, and just a, a concept that um, I don't know, we just had some wood laying around, so I asked my husband to make it, and it turned out really, really well, so I'm excited about that. Also, in this video, I thought I would share with you my three hen quiche, and this is something that we make a lot of times on Sunday, and we usually have it for brunch, either after church, or sometimes if I'm really Johnny on the spot, then I will have it first thing before we head out the door, and it makes for great leftovers um, the next day for the farm. So a lot of times I feed, um, feed the crew lunch, and so this makes for great leftovers. I don't know about you, but it's kind of like lasagna and um, quiche can be like that too, where it sometimes tastes better the next day. This is a fantastic recipe, super easy, and most everything that is in here comes from our farm, which makes me feel really good about it. Other than the flour, we don't grow flour. And this crust is so delicious, so easy, a no fail. If you have made crust before and just felt like making pies or anything like that is not for you, try this one out. It literally will change your thoughts on making pies and pie crust. But let's go take a look really quick at my new little rice bed that we did for the tulips. So I had to grab the umbrella because the rain, it feels like there's like little snow pellets falling and it is so cold. I'm definitely gonna have to go in after I'm done planting those ranunculus and warm up inside next to the fire. Okay, so I wanna show you right behind me is this raised bed that Jason put together for me. What I love about it is that it is temporary and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. But we just put the bulbs in. Well, I put a couple inches of compost down, a little bit of fertilizer, put my bulbs in, really close spacing. I think we have a little over a thousand bulbs in here. Um, it could be more than that. I lost count. I counted at one point, but it just, as my brain ages, it just left me, it's gone. And so anyways, back behind me, I set this up. Last year on one of our videos, we did the same idea, but we didn't use the railing or the wooden uh, rails on the sides. And birds just came in and ate all, a lot of the tulips. We still got a lot of tulips out of it, but they did a number on them and just kind of scratched through all the compost and it just was a big mess so this year what I did to, to just you know fix the problem was this so here along the sides you can see where we just used little ply board that Jason cut into strips and we just had this has been aged I mean we just never used it so this is a perfect use of it we just took these little wood stakes and then pounded it in to hold it into place put a couple inches of compost and then planted our bulbs right in there and then I I put another six inches of compost over the top of them this is a horse fencing post that we had cut down for our galvanized low tunnels uh, to secure those and instead of putting the tunnel around I just used these cute little terracotta pots. I got these at the dollar store this time of year, Easter, they always have them. And so I use them just to kind of hold this bird netting up. Yesterday we had some holes in the bird netting and the birds were still getting in. So Jason, I saw he did this, this is really kind of cool. He just used some floral wire and sewed the hole up. So now you can see the birds definitely got a hold of a few of the bulbs, but now there has been no birds today. I also use these like landscape fabric pens that we use for a landscape just to hold them down to hold the bird netting into place. So that is my fix for this year's tulips that are in that little spot. I don't know if you've ever had problems with 
birds getting to your tulips. I think because, because the ground is so like soft, they're just able to scratch through that compost. That's probably why I have a problem with it. But that was my fix and I think it's gonna work pretty well. So I'm gonna head to the greenhouse and get our ranunculus going and I'm gonna take you along and show you how I do it. Because ranunculus are one of those things. They can be tricky to grow. So ranunculus can be really tricky to grow, or at least they're kind of like one of those things that uh, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Lysianthus. Lysianthus have that like mindset of like they're super hard to start. They're just, you know, they take a lot of babying. Ranunculus don't take that much work or time. They generally for me do really, really well, but I do know that they can have some problems. And I think one of the problems is, is that one, people will soak them for too long and they start to rot or they're, the main problem that I see is, or even that I have had myself, is where your medium or your potting soil is just a little bit too wet. And then when you put your soaked chromes in, then you tend to get some rot and loss that way. They just get really mushy. Anemones to me are harder to do, I mean to grow well, and I tend to have more loss on anemones. I don't know about you guys, but if I have it too, if the soil is too wet that I'm pre-sprouting them in, I will we'll definitely, and they're just gross. The anemones, man, ooh, they stink. But ranunculus are a little bit easier, I find. Um, we grow quite a few ranunculus in all the different colors, and I do save some of my chrome for and and hold them over and I've done that for years and it's worked like magic now I'm gonna go through some of the steps here that we take so I started these chromes in the kitchen this was a bag of amidine orange they're the five to seven centimeters there's about a hundred chromes right here I put them in this little Tupperware there's a couple ways that we do this since this is such a small batch a lot of times I just take a spoon and I will just stir it every few minutes I make sure and change the water at least every hour just kind of making sure it doesn't get too murky. And I let them soak for about four hours only. Sometimes people will say to soak for longer than that. I do not do that. Now the water temperature, you don't want it too warm. You want it to be about 55 degrees or less. So just a nice cool water. So folks talk about making sure that the, the water stays aerated, that there's some air bubbling through. And so some people will use like a fish bubbler. Uh, I've never done that. I do have something here on the farm that is really not for that uh, use. We use the Growers Solution Compost Tea Agitator instead of making compost. I just put my bag right in the top where the little mesh holder is where your compost normally goes. And I let that bubble through. The one thing I have to do is make sure that it's very, very clean that works pretty well so I like to pre-sprout mine in clean trays that have a nice moist but not too moist soil I think that's key in doing this so once your combs have soaked for at least four hours you want to take them and put them in your growing medium I want to show you though first the difference between this is a pre-soaked and so I have about 500 amidine white that I'm going to do tomorrow. So these are the ranunculus chromes before they've been soaked. And these are them after. And you can see how plump they are. It's amazing to me how ranunculus can be so resilient. You can actually hold them in a nice cool dark place. And if you get them say super early and you don't want to start them so say you live in a cooler climate and you can't actually start yours until later in spring then but you get them in the fall if you just keep them in a nice cool place that doesn't have too much humidity uh, dry kind of conditions but cold obviously not too cold but <laughs> The perfect conditions. It's kind of like on the back of seed packets. I don't know if you, this just pisses me off. I don't know. I got to rant for a second. I'm sorry. But when it says does the best in sandy, loomy, perfect soil. And I'm like, you know what? Who ever has that? So if you keep, you can keep those crumbs dry and nice and cool, then you can hold them over. I mean, I've held mine over for like over a year and they've done great, uh, really good. So they are pretty resilient. That's what I'm trying, that is the moral of the story. So I'm gonna just show you here how I do this. So this is the soil that I use and I buy this in bulk. It works really, really well. It's just a general purpose soil. We do have a starting medium as well for seedlings, but because these are chromes, this is what we're using. 
I have been known to start mine in 50 cell trays and I put a little bit of soil and then just bop my chrome right in top there and let it grow on. Um, we usually do that when we know we're not going to have enough time or space in the greenhouse for them to get right into the ground and that just helps so that the roots don't get really tangly in our trays. So this is the other tray that I'm talking about. This tray has no holes on the bottom. This is the tray that this tray will sit into just to drain water and that kind of thing. But I have my nice soil in here. As you can tell, it's just not too moist. It's still kind of fluffy, but definitely my hand feels a little bit damp. I like that. We are going to take our ranunculus crumbs and sit them right in there. So it takes about two weeks for the ranunculus crumbs to pre-sprout. And this is what I mean. This was in a tray that we just pulled out. Those roots are very nice and white. They have just gotten started. And then this is ready to be planted out into the greenhouse. What pre-sprouting does is eliminate any of the problems that you might have or come across with the chrome itself, maybe getting soft and starting to um, find some mold or just die. Anyways, it just kind of eliminates that and you're able to get rid of those and throw the ones that aren't great out. And this is especially true when you are holding crumbs over like that you've harvested the year before and that you're planting back out. So it's really good to kind of get rid of any of the diseases and that kind of thing, which we have not had a problem here on our farm. Um, we don't even use what's called root shield. So a lot of people will take it at this stage and dunk it in a solution that kind of helps um, with fungal diseases and that kind of thing. We just haven't had a problem here on the farm and I've never used that, but do some research on it. It's um, not a bad idea and a lot of people have great success. So I guess um, the one thing I wanna say about this is there's lots of different ways to start this and a lot of people's opinions on it. And you really just have to find what works best for you. And number one, don't be afraid to start ranunculus and anemone chromes. I will tell you a story as I'm planting because I gotta get to work. I could talk to you all day long, but I wanna show, um, just take you along and I'll tell you a little bit about my things that I've come across with ranunculus. It's gonna take about two weeks for those ranunculus to put out those beautiful white roots that are ready to put into the ground here in the greenhouse. Ranunculus will typically bloom 90 days after that point. So you just take 90 days plus those two weeks and that's when you're gonna start getting your flowers. Here on our farm, we get about four to six weeks of really good cutting time on our rhinoculus. We have really good growing conditions here in this greenhouse, and so it's optimal for them. And plus with our cool uh, weather that we have here in the Pacific Northwest in the spring, they do really, really well. Once we start bumping into June, uh, they start to fizzle out and we're changing over to summer crops anyways. And so it's a fun crop for us to grow. It gives us a lot of flowers and it holds up really well, really well in the vase. For our mixed bouquets, they are one of the number one showstoppers. We're able to ship these flowers if we want to. We're able to use them in some bridal bouquets and weddings that we do. And they are just a very, very cool flower and one of the top sellers that we have here on the farm. These crumbs remind me of little octopuses, like upside down. And look at how tiny, they kind of get intertwined like that. So you could individually do these. These are gonna be really, really tiny. If they're too small, we a lot of times just plant them out in the landscape. You definitely want to plant them with the roots down and these little tops up, just like this. So I've put about two inches of soil in here and then I'm gonna cover it lightly. Some people say to put them in a dark, dry space, like a basement or something, as long as you have like a um, dehumidifier if it's really moist down there. For us here in the Pacific Northwest, we have these really gray days and this nice overcastness all the time. In fact, if you live in an area like I do, you definitely wanna be taking your vitamin D. That's just a little reminder. I was super low in it and had to go on a really high dose and I'm feeling much, much better. It's amazing how much um, a little change like that can do. Like this one's not super great. Um, you see how it's kind of dried now that it's fizzled and it's just, it's just not viable. So I'm not gonna plant that one in. That's what you're looking for. Something really nice and plump that's got some, some grit to it. Okay. So for us, we can just have them here in our greenhouse and they do really, really well. I've never had a problem. So here's my story about ranunculus. Ranunculus are one of those things where, you know, you can grow them great for years and years and then all of a sudden you can have a year that is just kind of off, whether it's something in your soil 
or something and how you started it or I don't know it can just be like you don't even know and you're just pulling your hair out because you have you you did everything that you do normally and something happens wrong so ranoculus can be kind of like that I, I remember one year I had like a year that just we had I think we had some voles and gophers and things like that come in and just we just really struggled with that and also like aphids and I mean, I was just like, what the heck? And then the next year I grew ranoculus that were amazing. I mean, these guys were waist high, no joke. I mean, beautiful stuff, beautiful crop. So I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I, I have made it. I have arrived. And um, so I had a call from a friend who was, they don't farm anymore, but they were known in our area for just growing spring crop like you would not believe and he calls me he's like hey are you having a problem with your ranoculus uh this year our crop is failing like miserable and i'm like no mine's doing great i kind of felt bad i have made it they are amazing <laughs> i was so excited and he's like no you just have these years where things happen and he was super distraught about it obviously because it's it kind of is an expensive crop to put in um that's a, a that's a big money loss but that's the thing about flower farming if i have anything to say about it even this year we've had these bumps in the road and you literally have to have true grit and determination and just you know things happen and you just chalk it up to like yep alrighty moving on and i'm gonna do something different what's plan b so um anyways that's my little ranoculus story so i'm gonna get these covered with a little bit of soil and i'm just gonna set them up on the rack and cross my fingers and hope they make it. They will. So I'm not gonna water at this stage. I'm just, I like the feel of that soil. I think that's key, key to growing good relaxus is not to have your growing medium too moist. I can't say that enough. But anyways, I'm going to head inside here and get me some coffee and warm up next to the fire. At this point we have laid down, we tilled a nice row where the sweet peas are going to go and then we laid down the compost. We tilled that in one more time and then we also then we put down so a little bit of fertilizer on top. The fertilizer on top will seep into the soil as we water and we'll continue the nutrients on it. Now we've we got these um, T-posts. They are, I want to say they're 10 foot T-posts. I run them into the ground just to where the the braces are just so about two feet into the ground maybe yeah about two feet into the ground every eight feet because these panels are 16 feet long we take the panel and we run it in and out so the the stakes kind of uh, hold it all up and then the, we just use zip ties to kind of secure it in place and then now we'll go along the top like we are now and we will run the same thing but we actually go opposite on the weaving on the top so it kind of everything's self-supporting we don't worry about this because um, it's structurally, the metal's strong enough that you don't need any additional um, support up there. It will, it's gonna hold the sweet peas up. And you saw like last year, they went clear to the top and it's probably the tallest we've ever uh, grown the sweet peas. Now in this greenhouse, we can do that. So you're looking at, um, what is that? Probably 12 feet tall. So in this greenhouse, we have to be, mindful of that because height wise we can we can only plant it in about these these four places we can't go all the way to the end of the greenhouse because it's just um we would hit the hit the plastic and take a chance take a chance of ruining it so yeah that's where we're at so far
the quiche turned out well. I burnt it a little bit with the convection oven part. So normally I don't turn that air flowing because otherwise the cheese on top will get a little brown. I like it to have a little brownness, but this is a little bit much. I'm sure it's gonna taste good anyways. We will see. That's a big slice. That was a very big bite. It's good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what ranunculus you're starting, what are your favorite colors, and if you've ever started them or not. Also, let me know what you thought of that little raised bed that we made, that temporary one that we just have the compost in and the tulips. We're just gonna spread that out and plant flowers right over the top of that as soon as we're done with those tulips. And until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.